Okay, for the new twist today, instead of using the double angle formulas, which we used on the previous assignment, we're going to be looking at the half angle formulas for sine, cosine, and tangent. So we've got, again, our universal variables, u plus v. So for half angle, sine of u over 2 will be plus or minus square root of 1 minus cosine u over 2. Cosine of u over 2 plus or minus square root of 1 plus cosine u over 2. Tangent of u over 2. Two choices. 1 minus cosine u over sine of u. Or, if I prefer, sine of u over 1 plus cosine of u. Now, a word about the plus or minus on the sine and cosine functions. The sines depend on the quadrant we're in. Right? Not the quadrant of u, but the quadrant of u over 2. So to figure out if our answer is supposed to be positive or negative, we have to be able to identify our angle u, divide that by 2, and then figure out what quadrant are we in. And again, we like to do three things. We like to find exact values. We like to solve equations. We like to verify identities. So how would we find an exact value of, oh, sine of pi over 8? Well, sine of pi over 8 is not going to be on my unit circle. But we're working with half angles. And I know that pi over 8 is half of pi over 4. And of course, pi over 4, that's a 45 degree angle. So of course, that's on our unit circle. So we're in business. And pi over 8 is going to be in quadrant 1, right? Because it's more than 0, but less than pi over 2. So I know the answer is going to be positive. So instead of putting a plus or minus, I'm just going to leave it as positive. So I know sine of theta will have to be equal to... I'm sorry, sine of theta over 2 will have to be equal to the square root of... 1 minus cosine theta over 2. Of course, cosine of pi over 4, that's easy. That's root 2 over 2. Hmm. 1 subtract root 2 over 2. Need a common denominator. Number 1 is secretly 2 over 2. Common denominator, I can combine those. 2, subtract root 2 over 2. Over 2, inside the square root symbol. Of course, I don't really want to divide by 2 because I've got fractions involved. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So I now have 2 minus root 2 over 4. Of course, I can break this up and say I've got the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. Of course, in the denominator, square root of 4 is just 2. And again, notice I did not put the plus or minus out in front. We knew it was quadrant number 1. We knew it therefore had to be positive. So I don't need a symbol out in front. I just have square root of the quantity 2 minus root 2 all over 2. That is the exact value for sine of pi over 8. Okay, let's solve an equation. Oh, we got 
Gotta do a half angle for cosine. Now, I remember when I'm looking at cosine squared of theta over 2, it's really cosine of theta over 2 times another cosine theta over 2. And of course, cosine of theta over 2. Well, because I don't know what quadrant we're in, I've got to use the plus or minus symbol. Square root of 1 plus cosine theta all over 2. Now, two very, very nice things are happening because we're squaring. Right? Positive times positive comes out positive. Negative times negative comes out positive. So I don't need to worry about the plus or minus. That's gone because it has to come out positive. And, of course, square root squared... Those cancel out. So the plus or minus is gone because we squared it. It must be positive. The square root symbol is gone because we squared it. Now I can just use the distributive property. And I just have 1 plus cosine theta. Hmm. Now... I see a problem on the horizon. How am I going to factor with a sine and a cosine? Those aren't like terms. Those are not like functions. Well, let's do the easy part first. Let's subtract one from each side. Huh. I know what to do now. I see the number one. I see it on the same side as the sine squared theta. Of course, I know what the number 1 is. The number 1 is cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta, which is super convenient because that positive sine squared theta and that negative sine squared theta combine and become 0 and cancel out. Now everything is in terms of cosine theta. So if I set this equal to 0... I can now factor because everything is in terms of cosine. My common factor is cosine of theta. So I can factor that out in front. I'm done factoring, so I'll set each factor equal to zero. That first equation is already solved. Cosine of theta equals theta. Let's solve the other one for cosine of theta. Okay, now that one is solved. Cosine of theta equals one. Of course, well, I don't actually want the value of cosine of theta. I want the value of theta. So, let's go around the circle. Looks like my first stop is at zero because cosine of theta has a value of one right there. Looks like my second stop is at pi over two because the cosine of theta has a value of zero at pi over two. And then my last stop will be at 3 pi over 2 because cosine of theta has a value of 0 at 3 pi over 2. So those are three solutions. All right, my personal favorite. I love the verify identities. Now for tangent of a half angle, we actually have two choices. It doesn't matter which one we pick. We can get through either way. I think it's a little bit quicker if we start with this one, sine over 1 plus cosine theta. If you want to challenge yourself, try to use the other identity, and you'll find you can still get through and get the correct answer. Hmm. I don't see any useful substitutions, right? I mean, if I saw a sine squared theta, I'd think, hey, let's try substitute. Or if I saw a cosine squared theta, I'd try substitute. Right? I'd try and take that number one and replace it with sine squared plus cosine squared. But I just have plain old sine theta, plain old cosine theta. So I'm going to multiply the fraction by the number one, but disguise the number one using the conjugate of the denominator. Right, we're pulling that old algebra trick out of the hat here. 
the conjugate of 1 plus cosine theta is 1 minus cosine theta. In the numerator, I just use the distributive property. In the denominator, I've got a FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. And of course, the reason why we use the conjugate is that O and I will cancel. Now I'm in business because in the denominator, I've got a cosine squared theta, and I've got the number one. And I know I can always trade the number one for sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. So in the denominator, the positive cosine squared theta and the negative cosine squared theta will combine to become zero, leaving me just sine squared theta in the denominator. So this is really nice. I've got a real concise denominator. So I can break this into two different fractions because of the subtraction in the numerator. I've got sine of theta over sine squared theta. Subtract sine theta cosine theta over sine squared theta. And to make this a little bit more clear what's about to happen, I'm rewriting sine squared theta as sine theta times sine theta because now it might be a little bit more obvious why I'm allowed to cancel a sine theta from the numerator with a sine theta from the denominator. The first fraction becomes one over sine of theta. I still have my subtraction symbol in the middle. My second fraction becomes cosine theta over sine theta. Of course, one over sine of theta is just cosecant theta. Cosine theta divided by sine theta, that's just cotangent theta. That's exactly what we wanted to do. QED, quickly and easily done. Uh, ah, much better. Quod irat demonstrandum. Today, in worksheet 6 4.